I hope I would leave a legacy of joy, a legacy of uh, real compassion. Because I think there is a great joy in real compassion. I don't think that you can know joy apart from caring deeply about people, caring enough about people that you actually do something. There along the banks of the Nile, Jesus listened to the song that the captive children used to sing. If we don't reach this generation, Indian ministry will be just about non-existent within about 15 years. The legacy is, a, is made up of a group of people who have come together uh, and brought the gifts and abilities God's given us to try to live out the love of Christ and to um, open the arts and opportunities in the arts for Native American youth. In America, they are the least recognized, the least um, thought of, the least um, even acknowledged. And at the Legacy, what we want to do is try to counter that hopelessness through art and music. And, and with the arts and music, we, we bring a sense of empowerment back to, to the children. I think he saw art and music as a way of really opening the spirit to God. I think going through the creative process for him helped him to really discover God. And I think uh, that that's why he felt so strongly that that was how he wanted to go about working on the reservation and bringing hope. It's a give and take sort of ministry that's happening. Not only do we minister to, we are ministered to. And it's, it's reciprocal. I think we want to go in as a servant and go, you know what? We're going to teach you to play guitar. We're going to teach you how to play the drums a little bit. We're going to teach you how to paint. We're going to teach you all these different things. And you know what? We hope that as we teach, you'll come to see Jesus in us. But if you don't, I'm going to teach you the guitar anyway. Their teaching doesn't throw out Indian culture. It helps people understand how Indian culture and the gospel have been meant to be brought together. Uh, that the Creator is the Creator overall and, and meant to bring them all together. This is not about you being what I want you to be. This is about me being what Jesus has called me to be. And I'm not sure that Jesus has called me to save the world. I am sure that Jesus has called me to love the world and to give myself away the way that he gave himself away. The last couple of years of Rich's life, um, he had moved to the reservation. And uh, while he was there, was developing a plan for a ministry that he wanted to, to see happen and to do. Originally, why I, I did this was I felt very strongly that something had just begun getting momentum and had just uh, started out. And I felt very strongly after Rich died that it, it shouldn't just be put up in a box, locked away and put aside. Our family and several of his friends wanted to see the plans that he was making come to reality. And so we banded together to form the legacy of a kid brother of St. Frank. It was something much more beyond Rich Mullen that he had an initiating part of. A vision that he wanted to bring hope to a people um, who had very little hope, to a people who, who struggle and suffer in, in so many ways. On the other hand, this ministry is not about Rich. I think God gave him a vision for a ministry. But I, looking through the scriptures, I see that God regularly started a ministry or gave one person a vision for ministry and began it and then ended it with somebody completely different. We want to keep the focus where it is meant to be and that's on God. I like Legacy and I support them because they care about our people and that first of all, that's what touched me most. I guess you start out thinking, you know, I'm coming here to help a volunteer. But then you go home thinking, I'm not sure I did anything, but I sure got a lot out of it. It's stirring things in me that I can take back and use to hopefully reach the youth on the reservation where I'm at. What I like about working with teenagers is opening you know, those new doors, showing them new experiences. Well, I knew that coming here to the reservation, not only would I be opening new doors, but I would be exposing these kids to doors they didn't even know, you know existed. The thing that I appreciate about the legacy is that not only does it help the kids 
but it enables me the opportunity to take what God has given me and offer it to those who are in need and meet them where they're at. Well, what's even cooler is to not only you know share that artistic skill, but also you know to share my love that I have for Christ, and that's just really. Uh, neat, and developing the friendships with the kids here. You know, I got Joseph, he's, he's so excited about juggling. We're joking that we're going to go to Vegas and open the show. <laughs> thing I, I really like about the legacy, that I love about the legacy, is that I'm working with people who really do care and love the Native American people. We are invited to the reservation and we partner with the local church or mission, um, maybe even a, a separate group of individuals, but we are hosted by them. They look to see what's been in the community. They look for the history of that community. Uh, they look to see where the Spirit of God is already working in and through uh, ministry and then to partner with that ministry rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. A camp normally runs Monday through Friday. We'll arrive on, on Sunday and set things up, meet with the volunteers, plan and prepare for the week. The days begin with a service, a worship time, presenting the message of Christ. Each child will select an instrument that they're going to study, if it's a music camp, uh, throughout the week. And they will go to that particular class for a couple of hours in the morning and we'll break for lunch, and then we'll have an activity time where they can burn off steam and we can just play and have fun with one another and interact in kind of a non-formal way. And then they will, in the afternoon, go back to class. They may choose a second instrument to study or they may go back and study the same one they've worked with that morning. It's sort of optional in the afternoon. And then we break for dinner. And in the evenings, we'll have another service where there's more worship time. And then we break the kids down into a small group, like 10 kids with a leader and they can converse more and get dialogue about what they've been learning, not only in the arts and music classes, but uh, especially in the devotional time and in the worship service, the things that they've heard taught there. And from there, we break it down to just them and God. We give them some guided prayer and journaling exercises as well, where each child gets a journal, they can decorate it how they want, it becomes theirs, and it becomes how they can another way to converse with God. And that doesn't always have to be with words. Sometimes we encourage them if they're more visual. It's okay to sketch what you feel like you've learned, especially if you're not sure you have words for that. So we'll go through that Monday through Thursday. And Friday we prepare for a community um, presentation or program where the children have invited their parents, they've invited the community around them and the people from the church or mission that we happen to be partnering with. And on um, Friday night, they'll perform. We'll spend all day in rehearsal. And at that point on Friday, it seems to be where, where God takes what we've been able to offer, both from the teachers and the kids, and magnifies it. And the first time we did this, panic set in. <laughs> but on Friday, the, the music started playing, and they started playing their instruments, and they started singing. And for me, it was like, a a choir of angels. I mean, it was beautiful. And they brought the house down, and the Spirit of God comes in, and these kids sing their praises and play their instruments, and it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful miracle that, that happens. What they are able to discover through that week and present by the week's end is miraculous. More than what four days of teaching really can do, but it opens doors and windows for the kids into the heart of, of God and to his love for those children. We have a, a staff member, Randy, who is um, Laguna in Navajo, and he'll continue building relationships with a lot of the camps that we've gone to, which will be much more effective than, than an Anglo doing it, and then we can move on to another area. Their heart is to raise up Native American leaders and to raise up teenagers who can be leaders, and if I'm an example of that, then I want to do the best that I can through God to, to be that person. We've seen more results lasting results because we are trying seriously to lift up Christ and we are trying seriously to love.
The ministry of the legacy is to live out the love of Christ, to provide opportunities, and to bring hope in Christ. One way you can help us is through prayer. We have seen the results of prayer in, in the camps, in, in the, the progression of kids in learning. We've seen the results of prayer in the hope that, that they're left with after a short week of camp. Pray for us that God will open opportunities and doors for partnerships in the right places that we might reach out to the kids and be a support to the ministries that are already on the reservation. You can also support us financially. The amount of work we're able to do, the amount of camps that we're able to do is directly affected by, by how much finance we're able to raise. The number of programs that we're going to be able to expand in the future will depend on how much money we can raise as well. We've had groups around the country, college groups, church groups, youth groups, that have taken us on to support on a regular basis by giving $5, $50. We have people who support us monthly with all kinds of different figures. That's a great help as well. You had the shoulders of a homeless man. No, you did not have a home. What blesses me whenever I do this and share with these kids is to see the outcome. I really enjoyed this experience and I hope I can do it again, come back again. So I'm going to miss these little guys. Look up there and see those little kids and those working together. That's what it should be about, you know, working together. No matter what race or age or what you look like or anything like that. I've seen the legacy offer hope and freedom to people in saying obedience to Christ is following who God has made you to be. They come to be ministered to and they come to have somebody say, you know what, there is a God who loves you. The same thing that ministers to people on the reservation ministers to the church still today. I think that's the good news of the gospel. Uh, it's a critical 15 years that we're in right now. Probably one of the most critical 15 year periods of time that has been known on the reservation for the faith. And what we want to accomplish in our work and the time we serve this ministry is to fan the flame of hope in Christ, in all the kids, in the volunteers, and in each relationship that we develop. One of the greatest ways to preach the gospel is through living out His love to people. Our prayer is that, that God will bless you and use you to share the love of Christ through your actions and through everything that you do. May God bless you as you go out and live out His love.